Hi, welcome to 10 Sisters TV. I am Carmen Geddes and today we are going to be doing patchwork piecing on our easy piecing grid. So come and join me. Hi, I'm so excited to talk about patchwork piecing on the grid. And if you haven't heard about our easy piecing grid, check out the rest of our videos on 10 Sisters TV. Our easy piecing grid is a lightweight iron-on foundation. Today we are piecing on the two inch finished, which means we're going to be using two inch, two and a half inch squares and two and a half inch half square triangles to finish at two inches. So patchwork piecing, the, the big difference in patchwork piecing is this amazing little half square triangle unit. And when you bring in half square triangles to your piecing, the sky is the limit. Um, but we are gonna show you some good tips for piecing patchwork on this grid foundation. So the quilt behind me is one of our sampler quilts. I love sampler quilts because all sorts of different blocks that you can use. Um, the book that I'm gonna show you the quilt in the book is, is our Seven Brothers Block Party. This book is all about traditional quilt blocks. And I wanna show you the one that I am gonna be demoing on today. This is our six panel sampler that has 25 different blocks in it. Now, one thing I want to show you is that when you are piecing on the foundation, or so, let me back up. When we design a pattern, we take the whole quilt and we divide it into sections that are the size of our panel. So this is one panel of the two inch finished and you see that when we are doing this quilt, this is a section of the quilt and so on the next panel, I'm going to just continue this way and I'm gonna continue in these other directions. So piecing on the foundation is very visual. I think that's one of my favorite parts is I get to see what this looks like before I ever start to lay anything down. One thing I did want to point out is that um, in a lot of the quilts that include sashing, I include it in the piecing. So in this, uh, on this quilt, the sashing is the same color as the background. But on this one that I'm piecing here, the sashing is a little bit of a contrast. I brought in these nice little corner posts. So when we are piecing a patchwork block, typically we're going to have different little cutting instructions and we're going to um, cut all the parts and pieces for this block. But what I do with a traditional block is I just break that block down into squares and half square triangles. Now not every single patchwork block will divide into a grid, but many, many of them do. So because we are breaking these blocks down to squares and half square triangles, what we do with our sampler patterns is we show you each individual block. Maybe we can zoom in here. We're showing you each individual block and telling you how many squares and half square triangles for each block because that's going to be your prep for each block. It's just cutting out squares and pre-sewing half square triangles. So when we are getting ready to piece these, I just want to show you a couple things. Um, this is the grid and it is fusible side up. That's the most important part of the whole process. That bumpy side is the fusible side. And when you are laying down squares, or half square triangles, we, I'm just gonna kinda make up a little block here. We are going to just lay these down on the foundation. The squares can be right on top of these dotted lines. We just don't want them to go over. So if your cut squares are going over the line, if that happens, you, we're gonna have fabric in our fold and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's look at these two half square triangles right here. I can tell, see how this one is definitely not quite big enough. This one is just the right size. But the whole concept of piecing on this foundation, or a great concept for me, is that my cutting doesn't have to be perfect because that foundation is. As long as these fit inside the squares, and as long as it fits in my seam allowance when I sew, they're gonna turn out great. 
but there are a couple things that we really want to look at when we're laying half square triangles down. So for instance, when we lay a half square triangle down, we're going to try to have them be the right size typically. And the secret to getting really nice points with these half square triangles is lining that seam up from corner to corner. So what I mean about the corner is you notice on the foundation, there's a little tick mark that defines each corner. And so I'm gonna scoosh these back so they are centered. And I'm gonna lay my half square, when I lay my half square triangles down, this is what I look for, is for that seam to be lined up from corner to corner. Now on this half square triangle, it's a little bit short, I'm going to center it inside my printed square. I'm going to line that seam up from corner to corner. And then after I get these all ironed down, I'm going to double check and make sure this is going to fit in my seam allowance. And sometimes I can tell just visually that yes, with my quarter inch seam allowance, this is going to fit, um, but you want to double check that. So your cutting doesn't have to be perfect because that foundation is. So now let's look at our panel that is all ironed down. There's a couple things that are really fun about piecing one square at a time, especially with patchwork. Um, a couple things that I love is that we can do directional fabrics. We can place directional fabrics and they look really great. You can fussy cut different prints, but one of the best things about patchwork is even though I have a pattern or if you have a block that you are duplicating on the grid, with patchwork piecing, if you just start changing a little the direction of half square triangles or placing squares in a different way, you've just des designed your whole new block and I love that. I think the way that we're piecing really helps bring out a lot of creativity. So when all these squares and half square triangles are where you want them, then we're going to give this a good pressing. Um, when we are first laying these down on the foundation, I use either a little mini clover iron, um, I do really like a travel size iron, this isn't hot, um, but I will lay down a section and then I am not going to just iron this, I'm going to just press these in place. Being very aware of what is fusible around you. And so remember this isn't on, so I'm just gonna set it here. So when uh, you do lay some of these out, you can lay an applique pressing sheet over the top if you like, but the fabric is here and the foundation is here. And so when I am pressing on top, I'm not worried that this is going to get on my iron, but I do wanna be very aware if I have fusible sticking up anywhere, I don't wanna get that on the iron. So I'm gonna press these in place now, after I get the whole panel ironed down, then I like to trim right next to the fabric, take this over to my big iron, and I'm gonna use some steam, and I'm gonna really get these nice and secure, because when we start sewing, we want nothing wiggling around, no little corners flipping up. And then, let's see, I'm gonna turn, I'll turn this this way to show you. So now, when we are ready to sew, we're just gonna fold this on the fold line and sew the quarter inch seam fold it on the fold line and sew the quarter inch seam. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, one of my favorite things, let me fold this back real quick just to show you. When we print our grid, we purposely print these squares just slightly bigger than your cut size because we essentially are giving you room to fold. So you don't have that fabric in your fold. So when you're cutting out your squares, you can use um, the die cutting machines to cut. Um, I'll be doing a demo on how I like to cut my squares out, but you're gonna cut them the full size. You're gonna cut that two and a half inch square. This is a great size for all the pre-cut fabrics. Jelly rolls, layer cakes, the five inch charms. You can even buy two and a half inch squares already cut out, but all those pre-cuts cut down to two and a half inch squares. So this is a really fun size to start with. So again, I just want to remind you that you don't want your square to be bigger. As they can be right on top of that dotted line, but you don't want them bigger than that. But because we printed that just slightly bigger, we are giving you room to fold. So you're going to fold on that fold line and sew your quarter inch seam all the way through the panel. 
It doesn't matter if you do the short seams first or the long, you just do the same one first throughout your whole project. So we're gonna sew that all in one direction. And then our next step is, let's lay this out so we can see it. Our next step is this is the seam that you just sewed and we are going to clip right between each of these squares. You can see that and you can actually see, remember that little tick mark that defines each corner? You can kind of see that and you can see a little dotted line and we're gonna snip right up to the stitching line. Now, we wanna go right up to the stitching line, but if you happen to snip through it, don't worry because this is all held together by the foundation, so nothing is going to shift or move. And now the reason that we want to do that snipping is so that we can press these seam allowances going in opposite directions. And I'm not gonna show you that pressing. Um, that is in the Easy Piecing Grid demo, um, and we'll, I'll show that again in another video. But you're gonna press those seam allowances going in opposite directions. But what I wanna show you is what it's supposed to look like after you've sewn that first seam, because remember, with patchwork, we wanna get those really nice points. So I want to show you what you are looking for after you've sewn the seam in one direction. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at this block right here in the middle. I'm gonna use my scissors as a little pointer. So what we're looking for, now your, your points are not gonna look good on this first seam, but that's, we don't want them to look correct. So you're gonna sew that first seam, and this is what we're looking for. We are looking for, see that quarter inch space here, the quarter inch space here, and over here where this came down, uh, where these seams are coming together. See, we want those to be together, and we want to see that quarter inch away, because when we sew the seam in the other direction, then they are going to be perfect. Let me see, okay, then this is a good point, or this is a good spot to look at, is that this is coming down and you see how we've got that quarter inch gap right there. Now another place that we want to look is when we have half square triangles that need to come into a point here. And so if, if it looks correct and it's coming to the point, we should have a quarter of an inch from where these come together to that peak, we should have a quarter of an inch, so when we sew that seam in the other direction, that's going to be a really nice looking point. Um, what was I gonna say about that? Well, I'll think of that later. So what I like is after you've sewn it in the first direction, then before I sew the other direction, I always come and check these out. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. If for some reason, this point did not come together right here. If it was off, what that would mean is that I did not line the seam up from corner to corner. Essentially, when it is ironed down, let's bring this one back for just a second. What I wanna show you is that if it looks correct when it's ironed down, typically it's going to be correct after you sew it. So for instance, do you see here where we have created this larger triangle with squares and half square triangles and this line is straight. And then let's see if I can show you another spot. I think that's basically it. That's kind of the one I wanted to show you. So if it's right, if it looks right when it's ironed down, then it's going to be right when you sew it. So after you, in fact, let me rewind just a little bit. Remember I said we're gonna sew all those seams in one direction and then clip? Let's not clip yet. Sew all your seams in one direction, then double check this first. Because remember when I said, like for instance, if this point did not look correct, you could unpick just a little section of this and lift that square up, reposition it, and then sew it down again. If you do ever have to unpick, what I really like is we're not unpicking two pieces of fabric that can kind of fray and become unstable. If you do have to unpick a little section, it's all stabilized with that foundation. Or you just sew this up and you can live with that. So um, I, I like to say that we're getting really nice points. I do know how to get 
perfect points, um, but I am probably not a perfectionist sewer, but I like you to know how you can achieve perfect points. So we're going to clip and press. We're going to sew that in the other direction, and then this is how they're going to turn out. And I think my points turned out pretty nice. I mean, I love that I got to do my corner post going in a directional way. Um, anyway, I think these turned out pretty nice. And the best part about it is the sewing was the easiest part of the whole thing. So remember that after you sew those second seams going in the opposite direction, the, the second seam is all pressed in one direction. And this is where I do like to bring in that steam. I let that steam do a lot of that work. But I hope that this inspires you to look at patchwork piecing in a little bit different way. Maybe you have a block of the month project that uh, has been hard to get back to. This is just a different way to think about piecing endless patchwork blocks. So if you liked the video, then click on like and subscribe to our videos. There is a link to our website, tensisters.com, where you can check out all of our different products. And I want to thank you for coming to class today and join me next time.